Okay, this stuff we've already talked about. Yeah. You can pay cash if you want. Just hand them your credit card. Yeah. Most of us do the financial aid. Just go to the financial aid office and say, what can you do for me? Is there any type of grants that I qualify for? Uh, I'll do a, a video that shows how to fill out the uh, FAFSA form. Uh, you can go to your local job services and sometimes they'll actually pay for your schooling. Like uh, I if you want to go for truck driving school, you know, they'll actually pay for that. They'll actually pay for more college courses. Okay, so when it comes to the financial aid, you know, try to only get the grants. While you're going to school, we all have living expenses, so you might need to get the loans. You might need to buy a car, you know, pay rent and things like that. So, but try to avoid it if at all possible. Okay, when you sign up for courses, in general, four courses per semester. And normally you would take two hard courses, two easy courses. Now even the easy courses are, are tough, but you know, like, like here, you, you might do an English and a science and then here you might do a psychology and a sociology or something like that yeah. which even the easy ones are, are, are tough but what I'm saying here is you don't want to take uh, uh, English math uh, uh, accounting and psychology all in, all in one all in one semester that would be a tough semester Uh, four courses in general is thought of as full-time. Uh, full-time is based on 12 hours, 12 credit hours. So it's not how many hours you're sitting in the classroom. Each course has a credit hour. Most are three, three credit hours. Like a regular English class is three hours where a harder science course or a, ha a harder math course might be five. Uh, easy courses are like two, might even be one. So usually to qualify for the Pell Grant, you have to go at least 12 hours. You can go part-time but uh, there might be some things that you have to worry about there so we'll cover that in another video but in general full-time 12 credit hours there'd be nothing wrong with taking five courses but like two maybe three hard ones and two real easy ones like an easy one might be a uh, intro to computer course you know uh, these days most schools they make everyone take a intro to computer course just to make sure that everyone knows how to use one so. uh, six courses seven courses that's uh, that's really tough uh, if you're new at school let's say you really didn't do all that good at high school and you haven't opened a book in years you may want to start with just one course just one course uh, when I went back and took all the computer courses I think I was uh, 35 or 38 when I got started I only, I only took one course at a time of course there were some semesters where I did more but it was only like one computer course, may, maybe two, and uh, 
in general, I only took one course per semester. At least, at least until you get used to the workload. Because, like here, you have four courses, right? English, math, science, accounting. Well, you're, you're going to have 50 to 100 pages per week in each class. So that's a minimum of two to four hundred pages per week that, that you should read. And some courses have two or three books, so there might even be more than that. Not counting the homeworks, the quizzes, the tests. And most of us still have lives, right? You got wives, husbands, dogs, cats, kids, houses, car, car repairs. You, know. you do that all all day long, and then you got to go home nine o'clock and start reading. So that, that's why I say you know four courses is enough. Okay, so here's here's the credit hour stuff. So it's not how many hours you sit in the classroom, it's how many credit hours per course. And in a future video, we'll grab a schedule and we'll actually look at where these credit hours are. So right now, I just want you to know 12 hours is full time. 12 credit hours, credit hour is full time. Okay, so the average course is three hours. The harder courses will be four or five hours. The easy courses are one or two hours. So in general, 15 hours is a lot. So that's going to be five classes, roughly. 17 hours or more, that's, that's uh, from my point of view, it's just crazy. Yeah. That's a lot, yeah. uh, but it's pretty common. I was given this lecture a couple years ago during a course, and I asked how many were taken 17 hours and three fourths of the room raised their hand. So what that school was doing was, I think anything over 15, it might be 17. I. I I'm not sure, but I think anything over 15, they pay the same. You could take as many as you wanted. So you can take as many as, as you want. That doesn't mean you're going to pass. So at that same school, I actually had one fella come up to me and say, uh, me and the rest of these people won't be in class today. We're all in the same chemistry course and the whole class is funky. So my point of view is because of this type of thing. They're just overloading the students. So four courses, 12 hours. Yeah. Okay, so now if you, uh, let's, let's say you take an English for three hours, a math for four hours and an accounting for five hours it well there's there's your 12 hours right you you may want to stick another course in there three hours yeah. so you at least take four you may have like uh, three courses three hours each three six nine and then take a easy one that's only two so now you only have 11 hours well now you have to take another course so you at least get 12. Uh, something you have to be real careful of there is if you're going to school on the pell grant 
that that's that fast of stuff you go in 12 hours and one course is too hard you drop out well now you're below 12 hours you may run into a problem with your financial aid money and there too if you're going to school on a Pell Grant or an athletic grant make sure you go to class 